I'm a man of my word because AJ Cole, when you were here in what, October, November? I swore to you, and play the clip, Fen. When we put this on YouTube, please insert right here the clip where I said that AJ Cole was going to be back on the show before the end of 2021. This is December 12th, or excuse me, the end of 2023. My apologies. This is December 12th of 2023. I promise you this. We will have you back in the studio again in the calendar year 2023. How about that? Yeah, I mean, that's quite a promise. We'll see if you can live up to it. I will. But Eddie, it's a joy every time I get to sit in this I'm, seat. I'm looking at the camera right now. This man, as we record this on October 27th, will be sitting in that chair again before January 1, 2024. That is a promise. And here you are. How are you, sir? I mean, 19 days early. Yeah. Twice in one year. It's great. What a blessing. Thank uh, you for having me. The blessing's raining down. Raining no down. down. No doubt. Now, going back to Sunday... Uh, my specialist spidey sense was a tingling at Allegiant Stadium. And then all of a sudden, I'm going through the photos post game, and I see that you and Shane Leckler, also phenomenal punter, in the house, breaking bread pregame. What's the combo like between you and Leckler getting, uh, getting going there? Yeah, that was really cool. Um, that guy is an absolute legend. Legend. Legend of the game, obviously, Raiders legend. Um, had a phenomenal career. Um, so anytime you get a chance to shake hands with a guy like that and talk to him for a little bit, it's, it's a really cool opportunity. Um, and yeah, we just kind of talked about some of the mutual connections we've got. You know, there's quite a few people here in the building um, that are still here from the time he played here. So we we're kind of just talking about that. And then I was just telling him like, hey, you know, I, I think it's really cool that I have the opportunity to play here and, and what you did and to kind of try and follow that up and uh you know it was just it was just an honor to meet a guy like that and you and i've talked about this a bunch with daniel and trent and now jacob like the the history that this place has with specialists you know obviously playing at a really high level but also the fan base the organization really respecting and appreciating what they do is really cool so i imagine it's a cool moment for you to see one of the dudes an og who came before you who i mean this fan base still i guarantee you at any home raiders game you see dudes walking around in shane leckler jerseys sebastian janikowski jerseys like a very cool deal yeah all the time i mean you know, Ray Guy, obviously, yeah, the Ray started, Guy, yep. started that. And then you've got uh, Seabass and Shane that kind of kept that going. And John Kondo, the long snapper as well. Um, and so, yeah, the, there's a very rich tradition. So, you know, it means a little bit more to be a punter of the Raiders than just about any other franchise. Agreed, 100%. Uh, and I was curious, too. Like, I was thinking, you know, I was like, oh, you know, you're, you're breaking bread with Leckler, saying what's up pregame. But then we see every single week, whether it's you and Daniel or guys across the league, there's always that pregame kind of meeting of the minds of the specialists. Like, what do you guys talk about pregame? Uh, yeah, you know, a lot of these guys are people that I know, people that I'm mm. friends with. Uh, the league is really big, but it's really small at the same time. So the Vikings long snapper, Andrew DePaulo, was yep. here my rookie year during training camp. So that's a guy that kind of took me under his wing for a little bit. We weren't teammates for too long, but he really did help me out, and I still catch up with him from time to time. Um, so that was cool just to get to talk to him. But, yeah, you know, we're just talking about different things. We're playing in an outdoor stadium. Sometimes we're talking about the wind, uh, just catching up. Um, talking about, oh, I saw you did this on film. You know, what was your thought process this? Or or what are you thinking about right now? What are your cues? Just kind of trying to pick their brain a little bit and trying to figure out, you know, w what it is that they're doing that's allowing them to be successful right now. And, you know, just kind of, you know, kind of breaking the ice a little bit because we're going to be sharing the field here for a little bit. Dude, Andrew DePaula, fun fact, one of these two strongest handshakes I've ever had experienced in my life. Like the first time I met that dude back at 1220 in Alameda, he shook my hand and I, I put on a brave face at the time, mm. but I'm I'm 99% sure like he fractured my pinky. That dude's got a strong grip. He's got a bone crunching grip yeah, on him, doesn't no he? No doubt. The yeah. other one, Austin Howard, who I think was here before you, offensive lineman, like right okay. tackle, big, huge dude. And I remember I was like, oh my God. I mean, you shaking a lot of hands. I so should. The fact that a long snapper's up there is high praise for Yeah, him. high praise. I mean, yeah. listen, and you know my, my love of, of all the specialists, long snappers, punters, all you guys, but man, I will never forget. I was like, God, man, this guy's got a strong grip. It's no good to joke. see a firm handshake. That that's oh, not, yes. That's not a lost art. You know? No, certainly not. Certainly not in the yeah. in, uh, in 2023. You gotta have it. But I, I was curious too, and listen, uh, one of the things that brings me great joy, I've been no, uh, you know, not shy about explaining this, when we get a, a huge A.J. Cole punt, a little part of me just just cries of happiness. We got an 83-yarder, not only a career long for A.J. Cole, a franchise record for your Las Vegas Raiders, your Raiders in general, the longest punt uh, in Raiders history. Ironically, you take that mantle from Shane Leckler. Uh, what it, what was that like, man? And I got to be honest, if, if that one was downed at the one, I, I would have lost it. I don't know if I would have been able to continue on for the rest of the evening. Yeah, I mean, almost just... Uh 
play of the year by DJ Turner right there. I mean, to to be able to run that far, that fast is absolutely incredible. Um, he got down there, and you know the returner probably is going to pick that up if DJ is not down there. Yeah. But you know the bobble and ball, you know it's kind of bouncing along. He doesn't want to try and pick it up, get hit, and you know create a turnover right there. So just a phenomenal play by him. Uh, you know, obviously it would have been unbelievable if he was able to down it, but his effort is you know really really great to see so uh yeah you know can't be mad at the guy for a situation like that i mean that's just all heart did you when that comes off the foot do you go okay that one that one feels good yeah for anybody that's ever like smoked a golf ball or made perfect contact with a baseball that's kind of the feeling same as punting where it just it feels like nothing um and that that, that's a cool punt because it's kind of one we've put in this year it's kind of like a misdirection punt where you show like you're going left and the last minute you you change to the right so you get the returner kind of lined up cheating a little bit too far and kind of swing back the other way um it's one that we've put in this year and, and worked worked quite a bit at um and you know there's a lot that goes into it as well too you know with the gunners and the snap and the protection and all that so um they made my job easy and uh yeah it just kind of caught it the right way got a great bounce and uh you know in a game like that you're really thinking that you know it's going to come down to um you think it's going to come down to the field position a lot of times in a tight game like that um low scoring and so you know i i feel like those are the games where i really feel like i can you know, make a big impact um, wasn't enough, but, you know, just uh, put it all out there. Uh, and I know the 83 is the longest you've had in a game. What's the longest you've had just, like, messing around at practice at NC State? Like, what's the what's the longest you've got in the in the arsenal as of now? Yeah, I mean, it would have to be up there. Uh, you know, you know, you don't really know because sometimes you're not really tracking where the ball bounces sure. to and rolls because you expect the returner to catch them. So, I mean, it, it's hard to kick it much further than that. Um, but yes, probably somewhere around there. Like it's kind of one of those ones you hit in practice, and you're like, "Oh man, if the returner doesn't get to that <laughs> one, that's going to roll a mile." So to see it play out on game day is cool. Yeah, it was really cool. I, uh, you know, I come back here for the second half. Of the games were in the studio post game, and I was sitting and I was watching on TV, watching on TV, and I go, "Oh boy, oh yeah, there it is, there it is." And we were oh so close. Uh, I'm curious though, like we, uh, our PR staff was talking about this earlier, you know, talking about the, the great year, the great 2023 that you've had. Have you uh, have you had a tackle this year yet? Is that the only thing that we're missing from the statue from AJ Cole? Yeah, that's the only thing we're missing. Yeah. But that's just credit to the guy. It is. No, it's a good me. thing. It's a good thing, right? But Yeah, for sure. I mean, if the guy's in front of me, tackle him before I get the chance to get down there. That's that's the dream. But let's not forget, you're an athlete, brother. You're oh, for an athlete. Sure. And look, if I got to stick my head in there, body craves contact. Yeah. <laughs> As the, and we were joking. I was like, man, that's what's going to put him over the top. If we can add a tackle to the Pro Bowl campaign, it's easy. Easy shoeing. And listen, I know we got a long way to go, but, you know, just saying. A lot of football left. A lot of football left. A lot of football left. Speaking of a lot of football left, uh, we're here on a Tuesday, short week, obviously unique schedule, tons of things going on. Uh, what does it change for you and Daniel in particular, and Jacob as well, going into a short week? Obviously, not as much live kicking, but how do you kind of you guys kind of turn the page quickly, get ready for a Thursday night? Yeah, I mean to kind of peel back the curtains a little bit. Um, so you know, you'll kick on Sunday in the game, obviously, and then Monday you'll go do a leg lift. Tuesday is an off day. Um, typically, do some body recovery type stuff, Pilates, whatever that might be. And then Wednesday and Friday are our big work days mm-hmm. where we get the bulk of our kicking in. Um, and so when you don't have that time, you you lose a day of preparation. You lose a day of practice um, so we kind of just do a shortened day on Tuesday because you kind of want to let the body to recover uh, going through a game obviously you kick balls in pregame halftime during the game all that but one of the biggest things for us is just the the amount of time you have to stay loose for mm. you know you have to be body firing at 100 percent productivity for five six hours um, and that that kind of just wears on you a little bit but you got to, you know, reset quickly, whatever it is, whatever your body needs, massage, whatever you can do to get your body on track because uh, the game's happening at 520 on Thursday, whether you like it or not. So you got to kind of get on get on your game a little bit and um, recover quickly. So we had a, a light day today, got a little got a little bit of work in to kind of feel that rhythm. Um, and then we'll go out there on Thursday. You know, and speaking of Thursday, Chargers come into town, and it feels like, dude, every single year, especially since I've been here and certainly since you've been here, Raiders-Chargers games just have this air of they're tight, they're funky, we kind of see something that we haven't necessarily seen before. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun to have you guys out there on Thursday at in prime time in front of the home stadium. So I imagine you guys also look forward to a division matchup, but certainly under the bright lights. Yeah, and it seems like we always play the Chargers on Thursday. I don't know if the schedule makers just love yeah, that matchup. Did, on did we do that last prime. year too? We did it in 2019 for sure. Uh-huh. We did it in 2020 for sure. We did it in 2021, maybe in LA. 
Was that? No. Yeah, no, that was the game, right? Wasn't there a weather delay in an indoor stadium? That was a Thursday night, was it not? Uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to fact check that. We'll put the stats right yeah. there. But And then last year we played the Rams, and then so... Uh, you know, we we, lo- we love playing LA teams on Thursday yeah. nights. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, certainly. Quick, quick commute, maybe the schedule. That, you know, that, there's that probably that like night. an element of logic to that, right? Where it is a short week, you don't want to have someone from Philly or from the East Coast flying in, or you guys going to Miami, right? So yeah, I imagine we had to fly to Buffalo on a Tuesday <laughs> night. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> that would not be fun. Yeah. But and it's even the best part is you don't have to fly anywhere. You're gonna have to sleep in your bed on Wednesday night. Come here, do your thing on Thursday. For sure. uh, and then the best part is now with the uniqueness of playing on Christmas. Now a nice little mini buy for you guys after Thursday night. And I imagine at this point of the year, as you call it, any extra days uh, are good days for you guys. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of times when it comes to December, the teams that are healthiest are the teams that are winning football games. Mm-hmm. So you know, having that rest on the back end is gonna be great for us as long as we take advantage of it. Um, and so you know. You'd love to go out there, get a win on Thursday night, and have a chance for the body to heal up going Thursday all the way to Monday um, and kind of gear up for the home, you know, the last three game stretch. Yeah, and we are we are certainly in that final quarter in the home stretch, but as you said, a lot of football left to be played, and that starts in earnest this Thursday night at Allegiant Stadium. AJ Cole it was so good to see you, as you said, twice in one year. And let's put it this way even bigger and better things in 2024 are for you on this program. How about that? That's right. I'll see you January 1st. January 1. Uh, who do we play? Well, we play New Year's Eve, right? Uh, uh, we yeah, do, we right? Do, we Colts? Do. Are we getting Colts? Colts on New Year's Eve? Colts That's what I'm New seeing? Year's Eve and then, yeah. Oh, so I hope I don't see you on Jan 1. It's an off day for you. Yeah, I'll come in for you. Yeah, you'll come. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next one we'll clip. It's AJ Cole. I will yeah. come in on January 1st to be on your show. All the same. Best of luck. Always good to see you. Uh, best of luck on Thursday night. And uh, yeah, man, stay safe the rest of the way. Appreciate it, Eddie.